top performances by the lovely film and television actress, Miss Kyle Aletter. Co-star of the Mike Hammer TV series, Miss Lindsay Bloom. That very funny gentleman, Mr. Tim Conway. Playing Eugene Bradford on Days of Our Lives, Mr. John Delancey. General Hospital's lovely Laura, Miss Jeannie Francis. Dr. Marlena Brady on Days of Our Lives, Miss Deandra Hall. The star of Too Close for Comfort, Mr. Ted Knight. The young man known as Webster, Emmanuel Lewis. From TV's Knight Rider, Miss Patricia McPherson. The lovely television actress, Miss Lee Merriweather. Dr. Trapper John's handsome associate, Mr. Brian Mitchell. From the new TV series Glitter, Miss Tracy Nelson. Stage, screen, and television actress, Miss Judy Norton Taylor. The prettiest co-star on Chip, Miss Randy Oates. A regular on the hit series Riptide, Mr. Ken Oland. Turning heads on As the World Turns, Miss Tanya Pinkin. That debonair movie and television star, Mr. Tony Randall. The young star of Silver Spoons, Mr. Ricky Schroeder. Newhart's newest co-star, Mr. Peter Scolari. Hollywood's handsome leading man, Mr. George Siegel. T.J. Hooker himself, popular Mr. William Shatner. Glowing young performer on Guiding Light, Miss Krista Tesro. Our special aerial coordinator, Mr. Bob Yerkes. And stepping into the circus of the star spotlight, your ringmasters for this evening. Our magazine's handsome host, Mr. Gary Collins. The popular star of MASH and Aftermath, Mr. Jamie Farr. The master of Masters of Ceremony, Mr. Merv Griffith. And that most beautiful of young actresses, Miss Brooke Shields. So join the stars and join the circus, coming to you from Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world, where for tonight your favorite movie, TV, stay nightclub stars will become circus performers, riding the elephants, taming the tigers, and flying the trapeze under the big top here at Caesars Palace Hotel on the all-new ninth annual Circus of the Stars. An enchanting child 40 inches tall commands an elephant over seven feet tall. This same youngster weighs 30 pounds, but dominates the huge two-and-a-half-ton beast. In fact, he leads her around by the nose. He's the young star of Webster, ladies and gentlemen, Master Emmanuel Lewis. <laughs> Monica, please. Thank you. Okay. Char. Play. Help pick it up. Play. Good girl, good girl. 
terrific. Just great. Wait, wait. We're not finished yet. You mean there's more to the act? Yep. Tom and I are getting roller skates. Excuse me while I put on my wheels. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on a high roll in Vegas, here's the fabulous skating team of Tara and Lewis. <laughs> The jungle meets the queen of the soaps. That's the circus news headline for tonight. The king, of course, a mighty lion. The queen, a lovely actress who played Laura on General Hospital for five years. Together, the royal pair present a coordinated, sophisticated act of precise movement. Ladies and gentlemen, King Kibor and his ruler, the beautiful Jeannie Francis. <laughs> Undone by a mere lass, one of our ringmasters, Mer Griffin, to be exact, has openly challenged the boldness of Miss Francis and will present his own ferocious cat in fierce competition. In other words, whatever she can do, he can do better. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the masterful Mer. <laughs> The murderous Mac. <laughs> and now, on with the feud of the felines. Igor? Jump. Good. Jump. Good. Jump. Show keyboard. Jump. 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 Ah, good man. Good. Wait a minute, Mac. You're supposed to be not so anxious. Not so anxious. Here's the hoop. Ready? Here's the hoop. Are you ready? Give him a jump. Hey, Mac. Give him a jump, Mac. Hey. Give him one more, Mac. Whoa. This is really important. This, Mac, this is close to the finish. Make it look good. Will you jump? Jump! Jump! Sorry. 
sorry about that. Ooh. Okay. Ebor? Rise. Ebor? Rise. Rise. All right, Mac, this is it. Now, this is the finish. Do it good, Mac. Do it good. Ready? Mac, pay attention. Rise. 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 Good. Good, Mac. Mac, over here. We'll give them the double whammy. Wait a minute. Mac, come here. I got your meat here. Okay, Mac. Ouch. Rise. No, rise. Whoa. Good one. Ooh. Congratulations, not for you. Congratulations to you both. And it was obviously a draw as close as a cat's whisker. Jeannie, you are absolutely wonderful. And Merv, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jeannie Francis and Mr. Merv Griffith. In order to prove to you just how long it can take to learn certain acts on the circus, the producers decided to try a little experiment. They asked our upcoming star to see how much of an acrobatic act he could put together in just three weeks, while working full-time on his own show. Good sport that he is, he accepted the challenge, and he's going to tell you exactly how it went. Ladies and gentlemen, the co-star of Silver Spoons and my friend, Mr. Ricky Schroeder. When they asked me to give this act a try with only three weeks rehearsal, I said, sure. I thought it'd be a snap. It looks easy when you see somebody else do it. Boy, was I surprised. The first thing my train did was put me in the training belt. And the knees come up here. Learning the basic somersault came next. Why did it seem so much easier when I was younger? <laughs> it can't get any worse. One, Couldn't get any worse, huh? Oh, yes, it could. Then we moved to the teeter board. Again, the basic somersault to the mat. This time, I made the mat. Then we tried for a shoulder stand. Well, we tried. Now I was supposed to land stiff-legged. Right. Well, at least I got an A for attitude. <laughs> Needless to say, three weeks is not enough to learn the entire act. But I did get a few tricks under my belt. Sometimes I even take the belt off. Here we go. Good luck.
Shakespeare has been bewitching audiences for years, so it's obviously he's familiar with magic. And tonight he performs it with a certain flair, a blaze of glory, and a flash of genius. Indeed, the man is completely fired up with the excitement of his own wizardry. You getting the clues? Presenting the charming, the enchanting, the spellbinding star of stage, television, and film, Mr. Tony Randall. Next, a famous mother and daughter duo perform what circus people call the cradle. However, no lullaby accompanies this aerial act. It rocks with excitement and emotion as mother and daughter hold on to each other for dear life. The daughter is a young actress who received wonderful notices in the highly acclaimed movie, The Day After. And the mother is the glamorous co-star of that most successful TV series, Barnaby Jones. And incidentally, she's also a theatrical producer. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the daughter, Miss Kyle Aletter, and her lovely mother, Miss Lee Merriweather. As you know, most of our stars have to be specially trained and rehearsed for their difficult aerial acts. 
But tonight, our next actor is an exception. And this is a true story. He was such a remarkable gymnast, he even went out for the U.S. Olympic team trials in Cleveland, Ohio. So obviously, it was easy for him to learn this next act. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting that very popular television star, Mr. Tim Conway. Assisting the great Conway is the young actress who plays Mindy Lewis in Guiding Light, lovely Krista Tessero. his mighty body cross stage. Note, his muscles are fairly bursting with energy needed to climb to the top of that narrow, quivering ladder. is about to leap into the air performing a one and a half. I, I, I beg your pardon. Oh, yes, yes. I beg your pardon, ladies and gentlemen, a double somersault into the chair, held by another assistant, the lovely Australian performer, Miss Judy Pascoe. I'm the one in the half. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tim Conway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the newest star to shine on the hit series New Heart, Mr. Peter Scolari. <laughs> And his assistant, the rather intriguing Miss Judy Pascoe. 
Peter's doing a warm-up handstand to prepare for the extremely difficult chair balancing act he's about to perform. I'm not sure what Judy is doing. In spite of his kooky assistant, Peter will attempt to stack seven of those chairs, one on top of the other, and do a handstand at the very precarious top. <laughs> Peter reminds her he's going to need more chairs. gentlemen who just entered the ring are called spotters. They're in there to catch Peter if he should lose his balance and fall. not going to work. <laughs> Neither is that. She'll figure it out sooner or later. Peter makes climbing up on those wobbly, unsteady chairs seem easy, but only after weeks of intense training and rehearsing. chair is in place and here comes the handstand well 
John Peter. popular psychiatrist five days a week on days of our lives understand the feelings and problems of a rejected athlete we'll ask dr. Marlena Evans Brady as she is known to millions but we'll get the answer from the actress who plays the good doctor ladies and gentlemen the beautiful Miss Deirdre Hall Algie Sea Lion this morning, and she told me the most distressing news. It seems that all the animals at the circus have been holding their own Olympic tryouts, and they wouldn't let Algie compete. They said she was all wet. I don't think that's fair. I think she deserves a chance. I know she's worked a little slippers to the bone. So what do you say, folks? Can we give Algie a chance? You're getting a chance to compete. Good girl. Okay, come on over here. Come on. And get ready. I want you to look at the judges and say your name. Good girl. Good. And wave to the audience. That's a good girl. Good. Algie, are you ready to do your stuff? You're not as nervous as you were this morning, are you? Good. Okay, come on over here, and let's start with gymnastics. Come on. And right over here. Okay, let's do a double pirouette. Yay! And again, good girl. And turn a somersault. Let's hear it for Algie. Good. Okay. Algie, I want you to hold this. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Over here, get ready for the shot foot. Okay, hold it, hold it, and go. Yay! Okay, now we know that algae can throw. But let's see if she can catch. Good. Good. She's dead. Now we're going to make it a little bit harder for her. Okay. Okay, 
Take a stand. And go! Ta-da! There's a lady on tonight's show who got her wings as a flyer on our Circus of the Stars trapeze. So we've asked her to introduce tonight's daring young actors. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lee Merriweather. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Well, I know that those performers up there are anxious to take off. So with the greatest of pleasure, here they are. First, the talented actress whose career is definitely in high gear on Knight Rider, Miss Patricia McPherson. The young woman whose nine years on the Waltons led the way to stardom in films, TV, and stage, Miss Judy Norton Taylor. And the prettiest cop to ever patrol a California highway on ships and co-host of On Stage America, Miss Randy Oaks. And the lucky guy up there with all those lovely ladies is the handsome actor who's making a big splash in the new TV series, Riptide, Mr. Ken Oland. <laughs> and our wonderful trainer, catcher, and thank heavens he's a good friend, Mr. Bob Yerkes. <laughs> and his wonderful assistant, Miss Gaynor Johnson. Bobby's getting into position. Randy's going to be doing a shoot over. He's given her the call. Over she goes. Beautiful. After leaving Bobby and returning to the bar is where most flyers get into trouble because they come to it usually blind. They just can't see the bar coming up. It's so fast. Patricia is doing a feet across. Hold on. Atta girl. Judy's doing the splits. Add a girl. Oh. And a shoot over return. Add a girl. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Now we're going to have Ken up on the raise. I have to keep quiet right now because he has to hear Bobby's command so that he'll leave the raise on time. Somersault, good force out, return. <laughs> to watch them in rehearsal, well, if you'll pardon the pun, <laughs> you'd think the only season they practiced, practiced in was fall, but, well, not quite. It did take three months while working on their own shows to learn how to handle themselves up there. It's certainly uh, plenty of hard work and devotion to hours of fear, pain, no. and exhaustion. You get off the platform right, too. Because that, that initial jerk. That jerk, yeah. And it's like I hang on really tight so that I don't, you know, lose it and drop. Oh. Right. Whoa. Whoa. Don't grab the net. You broke away before you fall. So much for the beginnings. Now, for more of their exciting accomplishments. Randy Oaks is going to do a one and a half somersault. Listen for Bobby's call.
easy. Are you all right, Andy? Yeah. <sighs> you just... The timing was not quite right, and uh, Bobby just had her feet. He was just barely holding on to her feet. I could see it out here. I was so afraid that she would land in the net over here. At least Bobby was able to hold on to her until she was able to get into a safer part of the net. The aprons are very dangerous to, to land in, especially for non-professional flyers. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but she has, uh, uh, her back is now all red from the, uh, from falling in the net. Randy has a knee brace. Randy was injured during practice about a week ago in a very close call. And here's some footage of that terrible fall. That's Gaynor calling for the spotters to catch Randy before she hits the ground, which they do, thank goodness. However, she did tear a tendon in her knee when she hit the hard edge of the net. But in the true spirit of the show must go on, Randy's trying again for that one and a half. Hold it. Oh, <laughs> she did it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> that is one happy lady. That's Patricia McPherson going for a hawk's off. They're calling her off the bar. Listen for it. There. Atta girl. Oh. There's Bob Yerke saluting her. He thought it was pretty good, too. Here we have Ken. Attempting something I wish he wouldn't oh, attempt. Come here. Oh, my legs are still. <laughs> right. Oh, he made it. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> A perfect cutaway. Judy Norton Taylor doing a song. Oh. muscles do fatigue, uh, your muscles just all of a sudden cramp up or they give out. Good girl. Judy's going to try for that somersault again. just called her off the race. Now listen for his break. Call. Beautiful form. Now, oh, good girl. <laughs> ah. Yes, she can be proud. <laughs> This is usually the final act in any trapeze performance. It's called the passing leap. And 
Bobby, bless his heart. Bob Yerke. Fantastic job, Bobby. Here comes Gaynor. Patricia McPherson, she's going to do a pushback to that. Watch this. Oh, backward swoosh hold, yes. Judy's going to do a somersault down. That was really a nice layout, actually. going to do a double somersault down to the net. Oh, <laughs> oh she's proud of that one. Oh, they do it. <laughs> Miss Randy <laughs> Ken is going to dismount, we hope, with the dive. I think he likes it up there. <laughs> As our stagehand is leveling out the last pieces of broken glass to complete the walk of glass, I want to prove to you how sharp these pieces really are. <laughs> Believe me, there's no trickery about this act. Only know-how and practice enable our star to take this perilous promenade. And now looking as cool and dazzling as cut glass itself, one of Hollywood's most beautiful actresses defies the razor-sharp edges beneath her feet and daringly performs the walk of glass. Ladies and gentlemen, our lovely ring mistress, Miss Brooke Shields. at home. Brooke was specially trained by a professional. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Brooke Shields. When a lady decides to learn about horses, she joins a riding club. But when she decides to do a combination of gymnastics and ballet, standing up on one, two, and three horses, well, you know the lady has joined the circus. She's a regular on Glitter. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Tracy Nelson. prevent her from being trampled beneath the horse's hooves if she falls. It does not, I repeat, does not help her balance. Tracy worked on the ground for several weeks before even attempting to stand on a horse. Zope horses and indeed was trained by Mr. Alberto Zope himself. <laughs> Alberto Zope is being assisted by two members of his family, Tosca Zope, who is 11 years old, and his son Giovanni. difficult to keep up with the rhythm of three different horses, which is constantly changing with each step they take. fighting to keep their balance because each horse has a different gait as she's revolving. The High Wire, ladies and gentlemen, is a circus act that I look up to, and for more than the obvious reason, because I've been up there myself, and I remember how frightening that height is, how you have to concentrate on balancing to the point where the perspiration just rolls off your face and you don't even notice it, how your muscles strain with the difficulty of every move because those muscles have never done anything like this before. So here's looking up at you, kids. First, 
the beautiful actress who plays the sexy, fast-talking, and fast-shooting assistant to TV's Mike Hammer, Miss Lindsay Bloom. <laughs> the talented actor who delights audiences playing the zany Eugene Bradford on Days of Our Lives, Mr. John Delancey. And the handsome young man who plays the dashing, fun-loving resident on Trapper John, Mr. Brian Mitchell. for an ice skating routine. You know, it's one thing to walk across with a fairly wide foot. It's other to place that thin steel blade with precision on that wire. It takes a lot of practice. easy Lindsay makes it look. Walking up there without the pole is a tremendous accomplishment. Not only that, but Brian is going to attempt to jump rope, which is hard for the professionals to do.
nine second attempt. Look at that concentration. Brian's muscles are at the point of exhaustion now. I know only too well how difficult it is to pull yourself up on that wire and maintain your balance. Look at that. Hold on, Brian. As our magnificent high wire team goes back across the wire to the opposite platform, let's take a look at some footage taken during their rehearsals. They started off about a foot above the ground, concentrating on perfecting their balance and learning how to handle the pole. Months later, they were up there 10 feet high. One more time. <laughs> then 20 feet up, which is exactly where they are now for this exciting performance. John and Brian are putting the shoulder bar on, preparing for their spectacular three person pyramid on bicycles. terrifying teeth and awesome claws. You know, I'm just amazed when every year on Circus of the Stars, an actor is not only willing, but seems really thrilled with the thought of going in there and controlling the huge, snarling beasts. Tonight, exhilarated by the danger, one of Hollywood's most popular leading men steps into that cage. The star of the upcoming CBS Movie of the Week, Not My Kid, 
ladies and gentlemen, the very dapper and daring Mr. George Siegel. George is playing for laughs. He knows how unpredictable and dangerous those big cats can be. Bring Maya in. Come on, come in. Come on, Maya. It's going beautifully, Maya. Come on in. Ho ha! Hey, ho ha! Hey, let's go. Come around. Come on. Hey. Hey, hey, let's go. Come in. Come on, Maya. Oh, Maya. Come in between. See, Tripoli got it screwed up. <laughs> Tripoli is in the wrong place. Leonard, come around in here. No, it's okay. Leonard, Leonard, let me try and explain this to you, Leonard. <laughs> that's it, Leonard. Come around. Yeah, go ahead. That's good. That's good. That's good. No, no, no. Come, yes, yes. Come in here, Leonard. Come on. Come on, Leonard. Right in here. Come on, right in there, babe. Right out. Right out, babe. Right out. Everybody up. Let's go. Hey, uh. Come on, come on, Leonard. Get, get up there. Come on, Jimmy. He handles okay, frightening on. lions and tigers like a real circus pro. Let's go up to the pyramid. You're going to love this. Come on, babe. This is the picture at the end. Come on, sweetheart. Rafine, ladies and gentlemen, my one friend in the act, Rafine. <laughs> Tripoli, let's go. Now it's time. Let's go. Come on. Go, babe. Everybody up. It's the, it's the pyramid. Come on. It's the pyramid. 
No, no, the pyramid. The pyramid. Come on, go back. The pyramid. No, oh. The pyramid, you heartbreaker. Get up here. Do the pyramid. No. Come on. Come on. Get up here. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Sit. Go on, you sit. Go to your seat. Go to your seat. Go to your seat. Go to your seat. Sit! Sit up there! Now sit. Just sit. It's the pyramid. The pyramid. Go! Come on, go! Come on up. Go! The pyramid. Let's go. Come on, the pyramid. Go! Go, babe. The pyramid. Hit that pyramid. Hit that pyramid. Yes. Yes, now. Yo. Hey. Hey. Leonard, loving it, loving this, loving this. <laughs> Leonard, Leonard. Go ahead, TT. Could you please, boot to please? Hey, come on, get, get up. Get up there. This is probably the fastest part of what it is I do. Sit down! I think this... Stretch it up, come on, stretch it up. And there they are, folks, stretching it up. Hey, sit. Come on, sit, sit. I'd like to thank these cats. <laughs> In the only way that I know how. <laughs> yes, sir, that's my baby. seen Burl Ives do this? <laughs> Act like you're enjoying it.
acting on a popular soap opera every day hardens an actress to the dangers, of fears, and anxieties that could confront her. We hope so because our next actress is about to be confronted by the dangers and fears of the swift and deadly arrows of world-famous marksman Mr. Bob Markworth. She plays Heather Dalton on As the World Turns, but she is really the lovely Miss Tanya Pinkin. <laughs> He's making it even more difficult, this time with a crossbow. A little show and tell here, William Tell, that is. And a show of bravery on Tanya's part. Light of that arrow in slow motion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to cover your eyes, it's okay, because that's exactly what Bob Markworth is going to do. Tanya will actually blindfold him, and then only by the sound of her voice will he attempt to aim for the balloon hanging dangerously close to her head. Obviously, we must have your absolute silence, or Tanya will not be on as the world turns tomorrow. <laughs> that scary shot in slow motion.
ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Markworth <laughs> and Miss Tanya Pinkton. You're a brave young woman. From Space Station to Police Station, this next actor always seems to be in control, always holding the reins. Tonight, he does so atop a champion saddlebred horse. Ladies and gentlemen, star of T.J. Hooker, Mr. William Shatner. <laughs> an American saddle-bred horse. These horses were bred for beauty and born for grace. Human beings being what they are, people began to compete on these horses to see who had the most beautiful, who had the, the best gates. And so they became show horses. The gates themselves walk, trot, and I can't. <laughs> now, some of these horses have a fifth gait, a fourth and fifth gait, the fourth being a slower version of uh, the gait, which is a rat. American Saddlebear, tough as a match truck, gentle as a lamb, and swift as the wind. They also come in other versions. Let me show you. This is a four-year-old horse that is green broke and trained 30 days to work cattle. These horses are shown in other ways, too. Fine harness, for example. This young horse has been trained to work cattle for only 30 days. Let's see what he can do. Spin. Back. And thank you. My wife Marcy, who will play the part of a cat, trying to get back to the herd over here. And this horse trying to keep the calf from joining the herd. Thank you very much. The American Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. William Shatner. to interview an orangutan. I'd say his career is getting too close for comfort. Ladies and gentlemen, the very delightful Mr. Ted Knight. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> hey, guys. No, ladies and gentlemen, actor's life is a very precarious one at best. You never know what the future will bring. So in order to protect myself, I've put together a little song and dance act for the future. I've searched high and low for a second banana. In showbiz parlance, of course, that means a co-star, a partner, a straight man, or a comic. <laughs> And I did finally find one, ladies and gentlemen, a beautiful redhead with great legs. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my partner, J.J., and my associate, Joe McCarter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just can't wait to perform, ladies and gentlemen. Not only can he sing and dance, but he is my best friend and a monkey. <laughs> so much for friendship. <laughs> JJ is now going to demonstrate his ability to show emotions as an actor. JJ, 
show fear. Frustration. <laughs> Worry. Yes, I've seen my wife do that many times. Okay, James? I want to show a little more respect for you, okay? A little more respect. Now knock it off. Ooh. <laughs> Stop this foolishness. Let's go with the real reason why we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in television history, presidential impressions in stereo. First, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> and his brother, Billy. <laughs> and now, President Nixon. <laughs> President Ford on the ski slopes. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? Thank you. Thank you for Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ted Knight. <laughs> and crated up each light. The popcorn has been swept aside. Balloons are out of sight. The animals are fast asleep. Their cages locked up tight. The circus tent is quiet now. Till next year. Then good night.